He was chosen among the seven to carry out a great duty, a work of wonder and success. He did. He did it well. All he ever asked was to be respected and recompensed for the work he did. Was he recompensed? No! Was he recompensed? No! Seven cosmic communities, all given to sheeps. Sheeps and good-for-nothing humans. Humans that we formed and shaped with our hands. Humans that we taught how to live and survive in the environment. Humans that we taught how to master the animal body. All because they are sons of the Force upstairs, the Force must fall. We rule Babylon and most of the Earth. We were locked up and out of control, but now we have control. The sheeps messed up and created an opportunity for us. And now their home is closer to us than ever. Infiltrate them, generals. Be alert. We have to win. Deputy, how many of ours have infiltrated their realm? All hail Mfumu Solomon. We currently stand at two billion successful infiltrations. Up to three billion souls come directly from Babylon. Many of our agents run that place. Very good, but it is not enough. I want infiltrations in all areas in space. Take advantage of their free will. It was given to them as a power, but they have no understanding of it or how to use it. We will use it to our advantage. My people, we only have 400 years left to take full control of the harvest. The Ten Virgins will miss the wedding. A piece of the Force plans to visit to reinforce them and lock us out. We will be ready just like the last time when we killed the sun. And then we'll start. Hi, welcome to the Zolobantu community. We at Zolobantu, we live in love, we live in purity, we live in justice. We are priests, we are scientists, we are judges. The three 
pillars of spirituality we bring together the best of us we build together we don't destroy support us by liking the video vibrate in love by sharing the video to one person that you love become our member here on youtube by clicking join follow us on instagram we have basically many courses over there follow us also on facebook we have many posts over there become our patreon to show us love by supporting us we have amazing courses available on our patreon account visit our website to know more about zolabantu click on our playlist here on youtube to be able to watch our courses for free and see our classes join the zolabantu class every sunday available here on youtube to decolonize your mind apply for the swahili language class starting basically in july it's free donate to us via paper if you cannot donate fans donate to us your time by blessing us with your skills and expertise on our projects bless us with at least one hour a week of your time our key projects are education food media army and the restoration of the african woman we love you so much Robin. do kisses Mwah. So that was basically just an intro for you guys to be able to know how you can basically uh, bless us with your time and also uh, know more about exactly where we are on the social media. It's very, very important. And now we're going to jump into basically our class. We are now basically in module two, which is Life 101, the history of humanity from the spirituality point of view. I want to welcome Brother Frederick and I want to welcome Brother Label and also Queen Amani. And those who are watching us live on YouTube, I can see I think we have about four people right now watching us. I'm so excited. If you want to basically contribute, you can join basically our session here on via Zoom as well. So we began basically Life 101 with what we call the structure, God, uh, the creator in existence and its creation and uh, we look basically last class at the structure of creation and basically in our module of life 101 we have a few topics we're going to cover in this session before we finish it about 27 we shall look at basically the creator in existence we have covered it in class number 20 uh, class number 19 and now we're looking basically we looked at the structure of creation in our last class and today we're going to look at basically the kingdom of the Simbis. But after that, we shall look at the construction of the physical universe. And then we shall move into the nine bodies of the spirit and also the activities of the spirit. We shall look at basically in class number. The next one will be reason for our arrival into the physical universe. We shall look at basically the beginning of the human civilization in the physical universe. And then we shall look at basically the fall of the first human civilization and its consequences. And then we shall touch on the biblical legacy of the decline of the Adamic civilization. And then we shall look at basically the human fall, the energy and vitalization of egregores, very important class, to the blood of animal sacrifices. You shall discover a lot of things in this class. And then we shall look at the human fall again, the strengthening of egregores by the energies contained in the blood, very, very important for you to understand. We shall look at the end of the first water civilization, Atlantis and the ARS. And then we shall look at basically the most important lecture will be the salvation mission of Rabuni Yoshua. And then we shall look at basically the life and the teachings of Rabuni Yoshua. And finally, we shall look into the introduction to the family in a new Africa. And then femininity and masculinity in a new Africa. And then the abuse of masculinity and femininity of humans. Class number 19. Honor father and mother, the foundation for educating our children. And then one of the most important class which cannot miss is the grace of the most high and introduction into, into reincarnation. And then we should look at basically reincarnation, the process of birth. How does birth happen? And then we should look at basically reincarnation, the formation of a karmic body. Very, very important. Huh? When you're coming back, they have to create for you a karmic body, depending on how you lived. And then we shall look at marriage, its sense and its objectives. We shall look at marriage preparation during childhood. How can you prepare for marriage as a child? And also preparation during adolescence, marriage choice and responsibilities. How do you choose a partner when you're considering to get married? And finally, the message of the end of time for all Africans. So this basically will be module two in this class. And then after this, we shall move into spiritual awakening and the wake up of the conscience. So Life 101, basically the kingdom of the Simbis is today's class. I want to basically give an opportunity for those who are here. If you had the chance to uh, visit the last two classes on the creator and in existence and his creation and also the structure of creation but a label did you have the time to check out the previous classes on the structure of creation what are your thoughts what you had maybe if you didn't have the chance to watch uh you can just uh maybe watch it after this class when you get time but a label you had the time to watch the structure of creation 
Uh, my king, I, I didn't have the time, so I'm 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 going to be recapping for most of the part that I missed up tonight, so I could uh, catch up on, on 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 all that I kind of like missed. But I mm-hmm. think uh, one of the kings or queens can 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 chip in to to have a, a word. Wonderful, thank you so much for that, Queen Baralebo. And also, yeah, Queen Amani is here. Queen Amani, you had a chance to look at the structure of creation. I think you were in the last class via YouTube. What are your thoughts? Um, yes, the, 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 the structure of creation, um, it, it was interesting to see the different levels um, in the spiritual realm and how, where, where um, we are as far as, hmm. you know, on, the, on that level and, it's, it's, and all the different places that are in charge of certain di- different things like the mm. nature spirits and all that stuff. So the structure creation is very interesting to me because um, as we grow you know, further in our spirituality, we gain access to certain levels as well. So understanding you know, uh, where mm. things are and how we started and where we, what the purposes of the different levels are, you know, it was very interesting. I, I definitely enjoyed the class. Wow, absolutely amazing, Queen, for those beautiful words. Yes, the structure of creation is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters, because you need to know where you are located in space and time. It's very, very important. I can see Brother Frederick has joined us today. Brother Frederick, um, your thoughts on the last class, on the structure of creation, anything, just uh, what you went away with in the structure of creation. Brother Frederick, right? thank you for joining us. Greetings, brother. <coughs> Excuse me. Greetings, brother. Sorry. Greetings. 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 Both, uh, Creator of all the grace, the sincere, sincere, the only one worthy of worship, praise. Uh, I didn't really finish uh, getting out of the class, but uh, as usual, it's always in depth to understand the levels, the different levels of our existence, of our mm-hmm. ascension, you know, the levels that we have to get to get closer to the most high. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's, it's actually, kind of amazing how each level has different responsibilities, mm. uh, different attributes to to uh, attribute to society as a whole. Uh, it is just so amazing how the most high can, can make it so that I you you can't be terrible or you can't have an evil evil spirit within inside of you because I need you to do this and I need mm. you to do that. You know, it's it's just amazing. And I just thank, you know, the most high that I'm able to hear to understand more and more from our teacher Arby. And I want to appreciate and thank you, Arby. Well, thank you so much, Brother Frederick, for that beautiful input. Thank you so much. We're gonna basically start now with basically the kingdom of the Simbis. I'm just gonna go back. So what's really, really important is uh, life 101 is really important uh, as you as a spirit because you are a spiritual being. You are living in the physical dimension. It means uh, you are basically a foreigner. Um, you are a foreigner here on, on, on the physical dimension because you are a spirit. You come from the spiritual kingdom. So you need to know where you come from. Mm? It's really, really important for you to be able to know as a spirit where it you come from and exactly when you finish your mission here on the earth and you leave behind the physical body where do you go to this kind of information is not taught in christianity because they don't want you to know you know they teach you religion okay when you die you go to rest in the breast of abraham and that's it but the breast of abraham is where if you go if you see all these um it's very sad, you know, that uh, some people in the Islam religion would tell young people to wear a bomb and then walk into a mall where people are going about their business. Everyone is trying to find their way and they blast themselves and kill 17 innocent people. And because they are promised in their religion that you're doing it for Allah. And when you die, you'll be able to go in heaven or paradise and have 72 virgins waiting for you. This kind of nonsense, which has been taught in religion and people do, and you know, Allah wa guba, and then they blast themselves. No, you see? So it's very important. Even in Christianity, they'll tell you things like, okay, you're going to die. When you die, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to go 
to to a rest when you, when you die you go and rest no <laughs> life moves on eh? when you leave this dimension you go into a different dimension and life moves on no one goes to rest and waiting for judgment day and then there will be a trumpet to be sound in the sky and all the dead bodies will rise this kind of things that we are taught in christianity because this was created as a religion to trap the people of the highest in mental prisons eh? I think the movie The Matrix explains it better. You saw how Neo had to break out of the Matrix. So for them, they are happy when they keep you in that box of religion, so that they can basically decide your fate. And you can, and when you just die, you just descend to the lower astral world where they can use you as a slave for whatever they want to. And it's very, very dangerous. But he and Zorobantu were trying to open your mind to understand the universe, to be able to understand your creator, the most high that you always shout day and night, the most high, where is he? But you have to be able to know. So we're opening your eyes here at Zorobantu and we're giving this with an uninterested love, a love with no interest. So we spoke about the structure of creation that we have source, and then we have the masculine energy, Katanzambi, the feminine energy, Mamandombe. Mm -hmm. The Europeans call her Queen Elizabeth. And then we have Mwana Nzambi, the creator. Mm -hmm. In other languages, they call the creator Allah. Some people call the creator Krishna. Some people call the creator God. Mm -hmm. Some say Mungu. Some say source. Some say consciousness. We spoke about this two classes back. And then we have the four living creatures, the four forces of creation, the forces that basically that Tanzambi came out of that Tanzambi to create the spiritual and the physical universe. And then we have the seven archangels, which, which represent the seven attributes of the Most High. The 24 elders, I was reading uh, one of the books that Black Agiso gave me, Black Root Science, and he speaks about the 24 elders, uh, 12 souls being masculine and 12 souls being feminine. It's, it's beautiful when you begin to study these things. And then you look at the spiritual kingdom, the first manifestation of the Most High to create light was manifested in the Tohu Bohu, in the darkness, in the empty space. And the spiritual kingdom was created. I mean, the spiritual primordial kingdom was created by the Most High. And then the spiritual kingdom was created. Finally, the physical kingdom was created because cause of the gems of spirits who were far away from the most high they needed to be planted to arrive at consciousness and the lower astral world came about later because we something happened that led to we many people felt their mission and the energies which people were releasing went to build the kingdom of the lower astral world which is closer to the prison way now uh, the principle of evil is locked. So we look at the divine kingdom. We said that uh, the Most High made his first movement and placed himself at the core end of the divine kingdom. And Mwana Nzambi, the first man, Allah, Akongo, appeared after being given the form by Mama Ndombe. And he appeared in the spiritual kingdom. And around the spiritual, and around him was four primordials that were re the reflectance of the four living creatures. That created the square of the sun, the first man, the Holy Spirit, God, the creator. Uh, so it's really, really important for you guys to know this, that in the top level of the primordial spiritual kingdom is found the God, the creator. And around him are four primordials that represent the four forces of creation, which are reflectance of the living, four living creatures. The four living creatures we told you in our last class that uh, the one has the face of a lion. All oh, this is found in Revelation. You can find it. You read the book of Revelation. But the Yohani had an opportunity to have a vision of what happens in the divine kingdom. And he saw these things, these mysteries. Um, so the one that has the face of a lion is the source of all heroism. That energy of humans or spirits having that energy of being a hero, you know, to perform certain kind of activities is sources from the lion. The ego is the source of all the elements that constitute nature and spiritual nature. All the trees that you see in the universe, the water, the mountains, all that energy sources from the ego. The ox is the source of all the magnetic and electric force. If you are a person of science, like with a label, all the science, the forces that you use in science, you know, electricity, electronic, the phones that we're using, all this energy comes from the living creature that has the face of an ox and then finally 
living creature which has the face of a man is the source of all the spirits in the kingdom you know the, that energy which created a spirit like you from the most high like queen amani but the frederick it sources from the living creature which has the face of a man and then finally today we're going to speak about the kingdom of the simbi so seven archangels represent the seven attributes of the most high we said that archangel means this archangel is the leader of many angels okay so uh, angel is what we say in spirituality an entity an entity does not have a free will an entity is like the servant of the most high the entity vibrates only in the light of the most high so we say that uh, when the most high placed himself at the core end of the divine kingdom uh, the spiritual kingdom was manifested and three types of spirits came out of the most high the primordials the spirits created autoconscient and the james of spirits the primordials were conscious already the spirits created autoconscious were also conscious but the james of spirits were far away from the most high so they came out unconscious so they needed to be planted to arrive at consciousness so the primordials prayed to the most high to uh, to permit them to create a second creation which will allow the last bonds the gems of space to descend to come and acquire consciousness so that one day they can also become like the primordials so the mission was given to one archangel that is known in the scriptures as lucifer in egypt our ancestors used to call him ra he appeared to our ancestors in a totem of a cat in Congo ancestry, we call him Ne Mbumba Loa. Mbumba in Congo means cat. So, Archangel Lucifer is a leader of thousands of angels descended from the divine kingdom into the kingdom of the Simbis. In Congo ancestry, we call the kingdom of the Simbis Kakongo. Mm? The Greeks used to call it Olympia. If you go to the Germans, if you watch Vikings, Ragnar used to say when he dies, he's going to go to Valhalla. So Valhalla is the kingdom of the Simbis. It is a workshop of the, of the Most High. Mm? It is like a garage where everything that is being manufactured in creation is done. All the, the DNA, the coding, everything is done in the kingdom of the Simbis. This is where uh, Ra or Lucifer descended to begin the project of constructing the physical dimension. He descended with other angels who were under his authority and they began the construction of the physical kingdom. Now, very important, if you look at here, an archangel, I'm just using illustration to make you understand. So an archangel like Lucifer is the leader of many angels, which we call entities. And then even in this group, when he descended, he had their categories of angels under him. We had he himself was a leader and archangel, Lucifer, and then he had other great entities who were below him. And below him, those entities also, we have what we call genie creators or uh, what we call um, simbis or entities. So there are also a hierarchy, even among the archangels. It's an archangel who's a leader of angels. We have great simbis who are below the archangels, and we have genie creators who are below the great simbis. So this group of angels descended to Kakongo to begin the planification of the construction of the physical kingdom. Before the gems of spirit, you and I could descend. They went to prepare a place for us. So Lucifer Ra descended. He was one of the archangels. He descended from the divine kingdom to here. You can see the red mark to Kakongo, Olympia of Valhalla. It is just after the, the seventh level of the spiritual kingdom, what we, what we call the Garden of Eden. That is where the gems of spirits were, you and I. Brother Frederick was there. Brother Labor was there. Queen Amani was here. Lucifer descended to begin to construct the physical kingdom, which also has seven labels. He just took a copycat of the spiritual kingdom he began to construct the same thing below okay very very important for you to know this so he crossed over the spiritual kingdom he came to the kingdom of the simbis in kakongo olympia of valhalla this is where he had what we call his palace and he began the plans to construct what we call the physical kingdom before the gems of spirits 
who were in the Garden of Eden. Mm? The Bible says that uh, Adam and Eve's spirits were in the Garden of Eden. Mm? And then later on, they had they were, the Bible says they were chased from the garden. Uh, that was the gems of spirits leaving the seventh level of the spiritual kingdom, coming into the physical dimension, even though it is written in a very difficult language in the scriptures way, you have to decode it to understand. So I'll speak about this in arrival. So Ra and Lucifer came in the kingdom of the entities that we said the kingdom of the Simbis, and then he began to construct the physical dimension. He began with Laodicea. These are what we call in the scriptures of the seven churches of Asia Minor. They are the seven kingdoms found in the physical dimension. The first kingdom on top is Laodicea. They constructed Laodicea. They descended. They constructed Philadelphia. They descended. They constructed Sardis. They went down to Teria, Pegamon, Smyrna, and then they constructed the constellation of Ephesus. These are constellations. They, what separates them are vibrational frequencies. It's not a distance of kilometers. No, it's a distance of vibrational frequencies. So these are basically the kingdom that they planned. They had an architecture plan because the Simbis, they took the, the, the energies from the primordial spirit to construct the physical kingdom and they took the plans from the speed created autoconscient to set out the architectural plan of the physical dimension so in the kingdom of the simbis let's zoom in in the kingdom of the simbis where lucifer was and ra it is also made out of three kingdoms it's divided into three as well we have the greeny we have what we call the great genie simbis uh, like lucifer himself an angel and these are basically what we call the army, the generals of the army of the Lord. Huh? The entities that you see, uh, the angels, are actually what makes up the army of the Lord. So the army of the Lord are entities. Hmm? In Christianity, unfortunately, if you become a Christian, you become an army of the Lord. Huh? You see people shouting, shouting in church, we are part of the army of the Lord. No, a human being is not part of the army of the Lord. It is the entities that are the army of the Lord. Remember... When Joshua was about to, I think, participate in some war in the scriptures, he met an angel who said to him that I am the general of the army of the Lord. I think that was Michael. In Kikongo, we say Nephonika Yanzambi. Joshua saw the leader of the general, the general of the army of the Lord. He's an, he's an entity, Michael, one of the seven archangels. So the great genie Simbis, they make constellations, they make galaxies, they make stars and solar systems. So there are even a hierarchy and responsibility is shared. The great genie Simbis, they make galaxies, they make constellations, they make solar systems, they make stars. If you descend, we have what we call the essentials of evolution, the Simbis of evolution. This second level, they make what we call atoms. Hmm? If you see, for example, in the, in the component of water, which is H2O, you can see that there's hydrogen. There are two hydrogens and one oxygen. So they make the atom of oxygen. They make the atom of hydrogen. They combine it together to form water. So the essential of evolution are the ones that create atoms. Now, if you descend, now there are four types of genie creators. We're speaking about the kingdom of the Simbis. There's hierarchy. They are genie creators that basically are responsible for the creation of water that they take from the essentials. We call them Simbia Massa, mm? the entities of water. The European ancestry, before the, they became polluted, the initiators used to call them the Ondims, the genie of water. They are the ones that are responsible for the creation of water bodies. And then we have another type, which are called the Simbian Tia. Mm? Europeans used to call them the Salamand, the genie of fire. Another type is Simbia Mopepe. Europeans call them the elves, hmm? the genie of air. They're the ones that create the air bodies that you see. And then finally, we have the Simbian Toto. Europeans call them the binomes. They are the genies that create the soil bodies that you see, the mineral body. The mineral world is created by the Simbian Toto. So these four entities 
Simbia masa, simbia ntia, simbia mupepe, and simbia toto are the ones that really begin to create the physical earth that we live in. The mountains, the water, the air, the fire, eh, by the use of volcanoes. Back in the days, they used to use dragons. They existed. They needed dragons to create the volcanoes and the mountains. You know, so creation is not a bracadabra like in Christianity. You believe in nonsense. God made the earth and the heaven in seven days. Boom. No. Now we are giving you knowledge on how everything was done because things with the creator happens naturally. There is no abracadabra. God spoke and things happen. We're diving deep to explain to you in depth how everything is done. The universe is organized. My dear brothers and sisters, to believe the, the creator created everything in seven days, that is religion. A woman, a child spends nine months in a mother's womb, nine months. But yet you believe that the universe was created in seven days. Huh? It's, uh, I think you have to use logic. If you have to be able to understand spirituality, you have to be able to use what we call logic. So we have basically the, the four types of genie creators. Simbia Masa, Simbia Ntia, Simbia Mupepe, and Simbia Toto. Our African ancestors back in the days... They were able to communicate with the Simbia Masa, the Simbia Tia. African sisters could be able to do certain things with fire that nobody can do because they were able to communicate the Simbia Tia. And they'll give them secrets on how to manage fire. They'll put their legs in fire and not get burnt because they had knowledge. Simbia Toto, they'll be able to move land. Simbia Mupepe, they did some things with air. If you watch, if you watch Avatar, the, the Airbender, they speak about this. They teach you these things, but they put it as if it's animation to make it ridiculous. I mean, if you watch Avatar, the Airbender, there was one little guy who could master both fire, water, air, and land, and he was taken taken to be some sort of a god that came to save the people because because he could master. It means he was able to communicate with all these four entities. They give it to you as a cartoon by Nollywood to make it ridiculous. But our ancestors knew these things. So the four types of Simbis we said, Simbia Masa and the others. Now we also have, we also have other Simbis like Simbia Minty. They are the genie creators that create the trees that you see. The trees, all the flora is created by the Simbia Minty. And then we have what we call Simbia Bibulu. They are the genie of animal. They are the ones that create the animal bodies. And then we have finally Simbia Kisemi. They are the genie of humans. They create the human bodies that we have. And welcome, Mother Ziva, to Siki has joined us today. Welcome. Now, if you descend at the last level of the kingdom of the Simbis, we have what we call group souls of animals. So the animals that you see around, animals don't have a spirit like human beings. No. Animals are what we call group souls. So in the kingdom of the Simbis, there's a place where there are group souls of animals, group souls of lions, group souls of elephants, group souls of uh, butterflies. So when a butterfly or a lion dies here on earth, the soul of the animal goes back to the kingdom of the Simbis in the family group souls of animals. And animals, they are group souls. Why? Because they have, their behavior is repetitive. They are not individualities like we human beings. We human beings are actually spirits. We come from the spiritual kingdom. But animals come from the kingdom of the Simbis. Very, very important. So if you look at the group souls of animals, they divided them into two sections. You did this in biology, vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates basically have a backbone, and then invertebrates do not have a backbone. If you dive deeper, you notice that in the groups of vertebrates, we have people, things like fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals. If you look at invertebrates, you have insects, spiders, worms, slaters, centipedes, millipedes, velvet worms. All these are group souls. If you look much deeper into mammals, for example, there are three categories of mammals. We have monotre, monotremes. There are mammals that basically lay eggs. And then we have what we call marsupial, mammals that give birth to babies that are not completely developed. And then we have what we call a placenta mammal, like uh, most of our ladies 
They are placental mammals, means that the baby develops in the mother's womb until its body system can function on their own. So there are even three categories of mammals. Hmm? For example, placenta mammals, there are many groups of placenta mammals like lorries, lemurs, monkeys, tassias, apes, and humans, which will speak depth in this, which will speak about the arrival of human spirits into the physical dimension after it was created. So the kingdom of the Simbis is organized. I've shown you that you have what we call uh, the genie, great genie Simbis that create constellations and galaxies, others create atoms, Others basically focus on water, land, fire, and um, air. Now, remember, this is the structure of creation. Each of these levels are constellations. And it's very important because you have to know what's in a constellation. Because each of these kingdoms are constellations, but they are of a different frequencies. So the more you rise, the more lightened it is, the less heavy it is. But as you descend, the more heavy or more less lightened it becomes. So it means because the highest is light. So far from the highest, you're getting into darkness. In terms of frequency, you're getting into heavy matter. So it means as you rise, it's more lightened. As you descend, it's more, it's less lightened, more darker, and even heavy. So if you look at basic each of these constellations, each of these kingdoms, it is a constellation. And in a constellation, you find galaxies. In a galaxy, you find solar system. And in a solar system, you find planets. And in a planet, you find land, mountains, forests, hills, like what you see right now. Now, uh, I've just put planets here in round shape, but uh, I don't believe that uh, we live in a, a round globe. But these are just images, just to give an indication. Uh, I'm not saying that the Earth is uh, round. But just get to know that in a constellation, as you can see on top, there are galaxy. In a galaxy, there's a solar system. In a solar system... Planets. So planets together of planets create a solar system. The togetherness of solar systems create a galaxy. Togetherness of galaxies create what we call constellations. So look at this. This is a very constellation. For example, right now we're in the constellation of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of the Simbis is the constellation of Kakongo. In the physical dimension, there are seven constellations. And in the constellation, they are galaxies. In the galaxies, they are solar systems. In the solar system, they are planets. Very, very important. Now, like I said, the kingdom of the Simbis was the workplace. They began to construct the physical dimension. And when they began to construct the physical dimension, they created it into seven levels, just like the spiritual kingdom. Now, the top kingdom is very lightened. The bottom is less lightened. As you move up to Laodicea, the, the bodies are very lightened. Let me give you an example. It means if a person from Laodicea comes to the physical earth, he can pass through a wall. Because the matter here on earth cannot block a body of Laodicea. Because the body of Laodicea is very lightened. It can walk through a wall. But the body here on Ephesus, you, you cannot walk through the wall with your physical body. It's not possible. You have to remove the physical body and get into a body which is more lightened to walk through a wall. Very, very important. So they created the kingdoms in the gradation. Look at the colors I've placed. If you look at Laodicea, it's more lightened. And Ephesus is very less lightened. It's very dark. It means the matter here on earth is very heavy. If you touch your body, it's very heavy. But if you compare the frequency of your body and the frequency of air, you find that the air, air, air bodies is very light as compared to your physical body. Even the radio waves, uh, gamma rays, infrared rays, they are more light as compared to your physical body. That's why they can go through the wall. So it's very important to know these gradations. So the top kingdom in Laodicea is very light. People who live in Laodicea, their ancestors, they don't have a physical body. They have an energetic body. 
very very important so in laodicea the ancestors have an energetic body same thing in philadelphia same thing in sardis same thing also in tetiria but in pegamon the ancestors in pegamon have a mental body the thoughts that you produce in your head it's an entire world it also has a body with eyes and hands the ancestors who live in the mental world they also have the mental body uh, and then pegamon pegamon is the ast no smina is the astral body mm? astral body also has eyes has ears and then lastly you have what we call ephesus where you live right now you have a physical body uh, your mom and your dad gave it to you during birth it has eyes it has hands but inside of you you also have the astral body and inside of you you also have the mental body so it's only when you take out your physical body then you arise in your astral body that is how people astral travel at night when you're dreaming you're somewhere your spirit goes in a different dimension mostly in the astral dimension to do certain things we shall speak about this more as we dive into spirituality in depth so the top three kingdom that the symbis constructed is called above and the bottom three is below laodicea is lightest fear the fear is lighter sadis is light but if you descend into the mental world it's a bit dark and then astral world is darker and then ephesus is the darkest ephesus the matter of ephesus here where we live is very heavy very very heavy that's why if you want to travel to Laodicea, you cannot go to Laodicea in a spaceship, like how we are shown on TV. Because in a spaceship, it means you have to enter with your physical body. Now, for example, to get to Laodicea, it's more than, more than 1,000 light years away. It means you have to fly your plane at the speed of at least, say, 900,000 kilometers per hour to arrive at Laodicea. That's why you cannot do that trip using your physical body no you have to leave you have to get out of your physical body and travel in your astral body so it's very very it's, spirituality is very very interesting so what we are taught by nasa is the reason why they pay nasa the money that they pay nasa 40 billion dollars a year so you can keep the narrative of space and star wars that is cinema it does not exist but it's possible uh, in, but if you want to do it, you have to be able to pass through the black hole. Eh? Many of the many of the Luciferian beings, when they're coming from the lower astral world, they use spiritual engines. When they're meeting with the American army in Area 51, they use spiritual engine. They come in like witches and they have contracts with the American army and then they go back just like that. It's possible using the, the black hole, but you have to, if you want to travel into other constellation in uh, breaking the laws of nature it means using other techniques because it's possible to cheat huh? it's possible to cheat because if you want to follow the most high you can follow the road the laws of the universe and travel like how you do at night but if you want to break the laws it means you do some incantations you get out of your body you have to leave your body you cannot travel out of the earth with your physical body is not possible you have to go out of your physical body like a witch and fly that's how most of these um, people who have treaties with the Euro American army, they do this in Area 51, somewhere there. I think you know about this conspiracy. They call it conspiracy theories, but it's true. So the bottom kingdom is very darker. It means it's heavy. Look, the top kingdom is Sato, very lightened, energetic body. And then Philadelphia is Sato. Sardis is less Sato. If you go to Pegamum, Pegamum is a bit heavy, but it's a bit dense. And then Smyrna is also uh, dense, but Ephesus is very, very heavy here in Ephesus because it is the seventh uh, body that you wear. So Laodicea is not very heavy, and Ephesus is very heavy. These also represent what we call the chakras. Hmm? So when you descend into the physical dimension, we shall speak about arrival. When you're coming from the, remember, the Adamic and Eve spirits come from the seventh level of the spiritual kingdom when you're descending you pass to the kingdom of the entities you're entering a new world you have to wear something which allows you to survive in that world it means you have to wear a body 
So in the kingdom of the entities, they do give them a body. When they descend into Laodicea, they wear another body. You descend into Philadelphia, you wear another body. You descend into Sardis, you wear another body. You descend Taiti, you cross the temple space, Mwela Congo. And then by the time you enter into the mental world, you wear the mental body, which allows you to produce thoughts, that you become a soul. So what is a soul? A soul is a spirit which has worn the mental body. You descend from Pegamum into Smyrna, you wear the astral body, which allows you to have emotions and feelings and words. And finally, your mother and your father have sex on earth. Your mother gives birth to the physical body and then you incarnate. Now, each of these seven bodies from Laodicea is connected to your physical body through seven centers of energies, which they call the chakras. Laodicea is connected to your crown chakra. Philadelphia is connected to your third eye. Sardis is connected to your throat. Titeria is by your heart. And then solar plexus is there. Pegamum is by the solar plexus. And then Sacral is by um, Smina. And finally, Ephesus is right by your vagina or your penis. So when you're talking about raising your vibration and basically activating your chakras, you start from the bottom up. You open the first chakra up to arrive in the crown chakra. So that is how we ascend. Ascension is from bottom up. So many of our ancestors who are in the kingdoms of light, in Laodicea, Philadelphia, and Sardis, they are basically, they activated their crown chakra. So this is basically the kingdom of the Simbis, my dear brothers and sisters. It's very, very important. Now, I spoke to you, I said that uh, when Ra and the angels began to create the physical kingdom, if you look at this illustration, so around source are the four living creatures, the four forces of creation. They send energies to the four primordial, which are found in the first level of the primordial spiritual kingdom. And the primordials send energies and architectural plans to the entities, Lucifer, Ra, and the other angels to begin to create the physical dimension. So Ra and the other entities, they send the information to the great Simbis. The great Simbis begin to construct what we call the galaxies, the stars, the solar system. That Our Majesty Ra, Nimbumbaloa, he was chosen among the seven to carry out a great duty, a work of wonder and success. He did. He did it well. All he ever asked was to be respected and recompensed for the work he did. Was he recompensed? No! Was he recompensed? No! Seven cosmic communities, all given to sheeps. Sheeps and good-for-nothing humans. Humans that we formed and shaped with our hands. Humans that we taught how to live and survive in the environment. Humans that we taught how to master the animal body. All because they are sons of the force upstairs. The force must fall. We rule Babylon and most of the earth. We were locked up and out of control, but now we have control. The sheeps messed up and created an opportunity for us. And now their home is closer to us than ever. Infiltrate them, generals. Be alert. We have to win. Deputy, how many of ours have infiltrated their realm? All hail Mfumu Solomon. We currently stand at 2 billion successful infiltrations. Up to 3 billion souls come directly from Babylon. Many of our agents run that place. Very good, but it is not enough. I want infiltrations in all areas and space. Take advantage of their free will. It was given to them as a power, but they have no understanding of it or how to use it. We will use it to our advantage. My people, we only have 400 years left to take full control of the harvest. The ten virgins will miss the wedding. A piece of the force plans to visit to reinforce them and lock us out. We will be ready just like the last time when we killed the sun. taking information which is coming from the primordials via the great entities like Lucifer and Ra. And then the great Simbis who create the galaxies send information to the Elementals who create the atoms. Elementals send brains of energies 
to the genie Simbis who create water, land, and fire. And then they begin to construct the physical kingdom from Laodicea descending up to Ephesus. So this was the work of the entities. They began to construct the physical kingdom. They completed the work. It was done perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then when the work was completed, now the gems of speed had to leave the spiritual kingdom to come and do an experience on the earth, which is at the seventh level of the physical kingdom. So they descended down to Ephesus. Mm -hmm. So in the Black Rose science, it says that 144,000 descended. <laughs> and uh, it's very crazy to think so because 144,000, maybe it's a symbolic language, but if we have 7.8 billion people on earth, it means we have 7.8 billion spirits. Mm -hmm. And we have many other who are, still, who are still in the mental world and also in the astral world. They also have to come back and reincarnate. We have others who are in Laodicea, Philadelphia, and Sardis. So there are many um, gems of spirit that descended into the physical dimension in Ephesus. We began our first civilization in the heart of Africa, in Katiopa. And while we were basically living and having the first civilization in Katiopa, we were basically in touch with the entities on how we should run and live in this physical time because they are the ones that created it. So our ancestors were in touch with Lucifer and Ra, who was in Laodicea, on how they should walk on the earth, how they should live. So Ra was the one who was teaching the gems of spirits on how to live. That's why our ancestors used to pray to Ra, because Ra was the mediator between the physical dimension and the spiritual dimension. So our ancestors in Egypt were sending their thoughts and prayers to Ra, and Ra will send it upward. But Ra, something happened. We shall speak about it in the fall. Ra decided that he also should be like the most high, since he's the one that basically uh, created the physical dimension, then he should be the one to rule it. He should be the one who should be the king. But you know, Kudamani, you give um, your friend a project, you say, okay, can you go to South Africa and build this and this for me? I'll be able to send my children to come there and learn. Mm -hmm. And then your friend, when our money goes to South Africa, he builds the school, your children are going to come and learn. And then finally, first of all, you begin to teach them, okay, do this, do this, do this. And later on, you begin to say, ah, when our money is over there in the US, I'm the one who built this school. This should be mine. I should control it. He begins to enslave your own children that you send to the South Africa. What happened? This information got to the Most High, and the Most High sent Angel Michael, one of the archangels, to come and remove Lucifer from Laodicea. Lucifer was removed from Laodicea, and he was sent into prisons in the lower astral world. The book of Jude says that those angels that did not respect their ways, the Most High has locked them in abyss. So Lucifer was removed from his place of position. The Bible makes it very dramatic that Lucifer fell from heaven. It's a very dramatic language. He fell from heaven. He was cast down from heaven. It is just a symbolic language. He was just removed from his position of responsibility. He, was, he became unemployed. And currently he's locked in the lower astral world with his fallen entities. But from time to time, due to our stupidity, they do come and incarnate back on earth. And they are the ones that are running the world at the moment what we know as the Illuminati is. They are the children of Lucifer that come to pollute the universe. So this is basically the kingdom of the Simbis for you to be able to understand what exactly the kingdom of the Simbis is and the work that they did. And uh, it's very, very important for your spiritual growth for you to be able to know what happens when you die, where do you go? But the kingdom of the Simbis is very, very critical. So in our next class, my dear brothers and sisters, we shall speak about basically the construction of the physical universe how did they construct the physical universe exactly because now we just gave you the kingdom of the entities we spoke about it but now we shall look at basically how did they construct the physical kingdom how exactly did they do it it was a work which uh, took a long time it's not seven days like how we are taught they had to prepare the materials uh, if you are constructing a house uh, but a label you have to mix cement, you have to mix with soil, you have to mix with aggregates, you have to create reinforcements. It's the same thing. So in the beginning, there was a need of 
dragons, to create the fire for volcanoes, to create the mountains. And then when the great genie creators began, they began, they began by constructing the constellations and the galaxies and the stars. After that, the essentials took over and began to create the atoms. After they created the atoms, the genie creators of Simbia, Massa, and Tia, Mopepe took over. They began to create uh, water bodies. They began to create fire. They began to create uh, air and land. After these Simbis finished their work, other Simbis took over the Simbia Minji. They began to create the vegetation world. And then uh, they created the mineral. First of all, they began, the Binoms began creating the mineral world. And then after that, the Simbia Minji took over. They began to create the vegetative world. And finally, the last um, gene creators are the Simbia Bibulu. They began to create the animals. The Bible speaks about this. The land gave birth to animals. The land gave birth to trees. Evolution. It means when water was created, fire was created, air was created, the soil, the mineral world was created, the vegetative world came out of the mineral world. The land gave birth to vegetation. Bible speaks about this. The genie and minty began to construct the vegetative world. And after that, the genie, Yabibulu, began to construct the animals, the group souls of animals came from the kingdom of the Simbis and began to live in the body of the animals that was created by the genia Bibulu, the genie of animals. And finally, there's one particular species of animal that was prepared by the Simbis to receive the genes of spirits. Hmm? Very, very interesting. Huh? So one particular species of animals uh, from the family of primates was prepared. So during the sex between the male and the female primate, instead of the soul of the primate to, to incarnate, there was a cosmic tent. The symbiotes guided it so that the gem of spirit who was in the spiritual kingdom could come and incarnate into the pregnancy. And that is how the human beings arrived into certain family of animals. Now, Lucifer now had to make sure that these Gems of spirits that incarnated this body of animals now need to evolve to elevate the body. Huh? They had to improve the physical morphology of the body. That's why Charles Darwin speaks about evolution, even though he polluted it. There is a lot of half truths and truths in many of these teachings that we teach. So the the first primate, he was an animal, yes, but he had he received a new energy, a spiritual energy. That began to elevate and change his body morphology, and Ra was there to make sure that this process went, went on well up to the point where we evolved for a long time and we mastered the physical body. We moved from a homo homo afferensis, we got to a homo habilis, and then we moved to a homo erectus, and then we became a homo sapien. But the Luciferian beings took this information to say that we evolved even further to become white. That is why many people reject the theory of evolution immediately because they think that if we, if we, if, and they say we came from apes. We did not come from apes. Huh? We use the body of an ape, but we are spiritual beings. Huh? It's, it's very, you have to be able to do some research and really meditate on this. We are not animals. We don't come from animals, but we use the body of an ape, we evolved it, we look different now. The, the, the previous ape was very hairy, but now since we are spiritual beings, we have a certain vibration of frequency, we begin to elevate the animal body. We begin to shave, we begin to bath, because we're spiritual beings, animals don't bath. We begin to, so that species of apes that took in the first gems of spirits disappeared from the universe because a new being appeared. Most of the differences, homo habilis, we felt like standing upright because the ape moves on the ground like this. But the spirit had to make it to move upright on two legs. And then we became a homo sapien. We began, we mastered. It took a long time to master languages, to create languages, to organize ourselves, you know, as in farming and all these things. It took a long time, you know. So, yes, Charles Darwin speaks of evolution, but he polluted the theory of evolution. He took in the theory of evolution, introduced his own ideas to say that the first humans evolved to become white. And that is how they used that theory to use to say that white 
race is superior, but they took it from the theory of evolution that Charles Darwin polluted. But there is truth in it. The first humans that became homo sapiens were black people in Africa. The white race came later after the loss of pigmentation because we fell. So we shall speak about all this in arrival, but next week we shall speak of basically the construction of the physical dimension. Thank you everybody for really being patient. And I can see each and every one of you is here. Brother Zivai is here. Brother Lebo is here. Queen Amani is here. Thank you so much for listening. So this is basically what we had for you on the kingdom of the Simbis. I would like to open up the floor to you guys to be able to jump in with your inputs. If you have any questions, please jump in and we can be able to uh, answer the question. There's any. I love everybody who's basically watching us on, on YouTube. I can see there are a lot of people watching us on YouTube right now. Seven people. Absolutely amazing. You can put your questions also in the comments. I'd like to open my the floor to our beautiful audience today. Uh, I can see Babila is here, but the label is there as well. But as if I just seek it, I think you came in a bit uh, late, but uh, I think you've been able to hear a few things. But as if I just seek it, uh, how are you doing? But as if I welcome. Yes, but as if I just seek it. We can't hear you. Thank, but thank you very much, brother. Um, I'm very well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> um, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, brother. No. Any input? Any questions? Your, your connection is jumping. But as if I, your connection is jumping. Okay, I think we are, where is Ivai? We can't hear you. We can't yes. hear you. Yes. Thank you. Your connection is jumping, but as if I just, uh, can you, if you can fix it and then we get back to you. Yeah, um, I can see we have a label here, Queen of Money. Queen of Money, uh, if you have any. Um, your, your network is jumping, but as if I. <laughs> Can you uh, go out and come back in? Okay. Let's have Queen Amani. Queen Amani, your thoughts? Any questions from you, Queen? I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this class because of the 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 kingdom of the simbis i didn't fully know what all that entailed so you explaining it was just like oh man this is awesome so i, I thoroughly enjoyed the class um to understand exactly what went into creating all the different things that um, all the different elements um, that were needed and then mm. you know further breaking down you know timeline sort of kind of right because what we are told is you know one day god said let there be this and let there and seven days later everything was just kind of put together ma mm. magically you know <laughs> like and, and no it took it took a little bit more than that uh a lot more than that actually to put things together and to go from one type of I'm going to use the word species, uh, but it might not be the best word, um, and see the evolution, uh, you know, and how we came to be. It's kind of amazing. So I thoroughly enjoyed this class. Thank you so much. Oh, great input, Queen Amani. That's absolutely amazing. Yes. Uh, to hear that from you. Yes, there's a lot. There's a lot uh, actually going on here. Any questions from, uh, or in contribution from, uh, I can see, but the Frederick is there, and they will have but a label. King Frederick, uh, any input from Quinn, from King Frederick? <laughs> greetings, greetings, classmate. Money, I love your voice. You sound so, like, so much like a A plus student. <laughs> no way, I'm a C plus. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that to you, buddy. But, um, you know, it, it's funny. You, you touched on, I have to agree with her also. You touched on some things that I know. But now that you explained it to me, I know why I know. You know, mm. it's 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 awesome, Aubrey. I want to thank you so much for the deepest part of my soul. I want to thank you for opening up my understanding of what I'm understanding. And uh, it's it's just this kingdom is so awesome. And you know, I wanted to say one thing that you touched on about 
of the armies of the Most High. Hmm. And it just made me think about <laughs> all these religions doing the crusades, the punic wars. Oh my, oh my God. Yes, you already know where I'm going. Oh, God, <laughs> we are the gods of army. Get out of here. You're nowhere close. We are human. We are flawed. My God, God. used what he knows is perfect. And I just want to thank you. And, you know, I got a lot out of this class. And uh, I hate when I miss the class, but I do go back and, you know, re-listen re, re to the uh, videos. And once again, thank you, Aubrey. May the, may the most high be very pleased with you to guide and protect with blessings to continue these classes. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much, Brother Frederick. Yeah, it's very interesting on the army because you hear Christians shouting in church, we, we bind you, Satan. We we squeeze you. We, we, we destroy you, Satan. We are the army of the Lord. No. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's very crazy, yeah? and it's absolutely crazy. Even Master Yeshua would say that uh, uh, if, if I could call on my army uh, to defend me, Master Yeshua spoke about these things. Uh, and uh, Baralebo, uh, Baralebo has been listening very attentively. Baralebo, if you can jump in, if you have any contribution or any or any questions, that's really amazing, Baralebo, if you can jump in. Okay, okay, thank you very much, Mikey. Eh, it's been really, it's been really a, a very interesting uh, a class, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I, I really, I really appreciate it. You know, it 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 really unlocks a number of questions that I've been having because. Well, actually, I like uh, I like nature, and every time when I go in nature, I see a lot of order, a lot of you see a lot of order. I see a mm. lot of different things, and always time and again, it it always baffled my mind. I had questioned like if because of course you know in Christianity and whole and whole stuff you are taught about the whole thing of everything boom in seven days. And I like I, I like the example that you brought forward about the because I even I was questioning myself like if a woman can get pregnant for for nine months and then she it takes that long and such a majestic creation and then we say in seven days boom everything was just was just there so I I, I really come to understand about this uh, about the symbiosis how everything was well organized from the from the waters to the fires to the air to the soil and how it comes all about. Uh, my question is: yes, You talked about Ra, uh, he being the archangel that he he was given authority to take care of of uh, of the creation and all these other things. Now I wanted to understand because uh, we we have an we have an understanding that uh, he, of course, yes. from the from the biblical perspective that he he had all the authority just that he was a created being but mm. uh how how could we i i thought like the creator it's him who has that capacitance and power to 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 to, to create mm. like the rest is just for, for them to take care of the creation and maybe to administer and but from what i'm hearing uh, if i go to well is that there was power given unto him to do the creation and all this. Very good input. Yeah. Very, very good input, by Lebo. You see, only the most high creates. Huh? Everybody yeah. else just implements. Only the most high creates. It's like uh, you and I can look at a tree and see a table. You and I can look at a cow and see a shoe. But the elements are already there available the tree is there you use your intellectual knowledge to pull out a table from a tree by cutting down the tree cut and then sew it and make a table you look at a you, you look at a cow you, you kill the cow take out the skin dry it and make a shoe so the elements are already there that was made by the creator you simply take those elements you combine it in a certain way to save you so lucifer did not create he just took energies he took the information from the primordials he took the architecture plans from the spirit created or the conscient and he just he just did a copy paste work he copy pasted everything into and then in different frequencies around so he, everything he did he took instructions from the most high to do everything that he did he did not uh, create out of his own will and uh, yeah for label if there's any other questions or input uh, i i get it i get it i get it mickey 
Uh, the one last question is okay. Now I'm seeing like uh, from all from from all the these uh, the these. Uh, the, the genes of Simbis, I'm seeing from all all of them. Uh, it shows a long time is there because you know in evolution uh, they talk of millions and millions and millions of years and millions of years. Mm. So in this, like for instance, from the the Simbis of uh, Simbia Massa to Simbia Ntia, like from from each level type of mm. uh, of gene creators, like from from one level to another. Like, uh, is there some projection of time frame that you say, okay, from here, maybe when this was complete, or because I see it's order, and for you to at one point find to have a continue or something, okay, ah, now, uh, now my king is he has come online. You took time to set mm. your computer and see that, okay, the very continues. good, but very the, good example. The speakers are okay, okay. Now you can say, ah, now you can tune in, let the people come in. So I think there must be some sort of like stages where I can create like ah I'm ready now the then you go to another yeah I love that I love that example very level that I'm telling you if you just use logic in spirituality you'll be able to understand anything just using logic so yes there is a time span there is a time span because the Bible for example just summarized to say the land gave birth to animals land gave birth to vegetation but that's a that's a long time of work that the Simbis had to do because if you're talking about mixing the atom of an oxygen and oxygen atom and hydrogen atom to fuse together to create water, it takes a long time. It is a long time. It took a really long time for these things to be done. I am not um, exact with the numbers. Maybe I would be able to meditate. Maybe the Most High can show the grace, but just know that it takes a long time. But I can give you a good example. For example, if you look at how long a, a woman takes a child takes in the womb of a mother um, a child develops for nine months mm -hmm. and in that nine months the animal man forms in the mother's womb it takes nine months and even when after nine months the child takes a few years begins to crow and begins to try to stand upright with his two legs and finally the child begins to crow. so you can even see evolution even when you're a mother that your baby was in the womb came out began to crow just like an ape crowing like an ape trying to stand up with two legs and then finally a child begins to walk now if you look at evolution when the when we arrived for the very first time we incarnated the body of an ape but it took us now if you look at the time right, look at the mother's womb nine months to grow and you notice that um the animal body arrives at maturity huh, at the age of 14 for boys and 12 for girls that's when your body arrives at maturity huh? for boys they begin to have a deep voice hair on the armpit, you know, both shoulders. Women begin to menstruate after 12 years and boys 14 years. That is the time, 12 million years for to evolve, uh, to get to the point of becoming a homo sapien from osoafetical afferences to becoming a homo sapien. It, 12, it took 12 million years. So Darwin began right, he began, he began good his research. When you spoke about also Africa's afferences to homo sapiens, but the problem that he took it to becoming white, which is wrong. So you can see the time span, 12, 12 million years to arrive at homo sapiens. And even a human being, if you give birth to a child at the age of 14, that's when they become puberty. You see? So even those numbers, you see, it's really re correlating. If you, so if, if you want to understand the, 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 the macro, study the micro. If you want to understand something which is in a larger scale, observe something in a very small scale that's how the print that's that's the that's the principle you can use when decoding the spiritual things if you i, I would love you guys to study the life of a butterfly you will notice that if you look at the life of life the life cycle of a butterfly it's the same thing for a human being so you can use nature to decode certain secrets of the universe yeah but a label ah, i get it i get it my king uh i think i'll, I'll need to i'll need to go to to check further and then i i saw that I could catch up with uh, the previous uh classes that we have this is very interesting really interesting thank you so much brother Lebo. i can see brother uh, brother. one yeah. one last yes. okay maybe the brother can come and i'll come back later okay we have uh brother abraham obie sinti has joined us brother abraham welcome how are you doing i'm doing great brother Ivy. thank you uh, so much for the good work you are doing wow you came very late huh 
Yes, I just saw the post on the uh, WhatsApp group that uh, the classroom is open, and then oh, I said, oh, let oh. me just join. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for joining us. I think you watch the class on YouTube, and you'll be able to yes, catch up with us. But how are you doing? Yeah. How is the family doing? The family is doing awesome, you know? Yeah, God has been good to us. Yes, wow. thank you so much for the good work you are doing. Oh, that's amazing, Abraham. You have, the, you have a very nice name, huh? Obu. Yeah, Sintim. What does it mean? Obuje Sintim. Yes, Obuje, Obuje Sintim, Abraham. Wow. What, what yes. does Obuje mean? What does it mean? Uh, it means courageous. Mm. I can even hear it in your voice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Brother Obuje. We're almost at the end of the class, but you can watch the class on YouTube so you can be able yes, to catch up uh, with us. Uh. Yes, Brother Lebo. Uh, if you can jump in, Brother Lebo, before we close. Yeah, yeah. I had a question. Uh, maybe we, you can go to the the uh, the kingdoms of the Simbis. Can you go back to that slide, please? That slide, please. The kingdom. Which where they are. this one? Yeah, 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 that one. Yeah, yeah. Here we see we see the the level. Or oh, maybe can you go to the other one where it was the the, the grading of light was going down until Ethesus? Oh, you mean the grad the gradations? Huh? The gradations. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me just. Uh... Uh -huh, uh -huh, this one. Okay, uh -huh. this one, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I'm seeing that, uh, like as you mentioned, like uh, it, uh, we are in the Ephesus, we are in the physical body, which which is the physical yes. matter, uh, yes. physical body, and uh, all these levels as you transcend to Laodicea, uh, it's different. Uh, you have to carry different. Uh, Different body. I don't know if it's the right word. Different yes, body. Yes, yes, yes. Each of these kingdoms have a certain body of certain vibrational uh -huh. frequency. Now, my question is: Yes, they have different uh, vibrations throughout, from all the way yes. down. But my, my, my question is: Now, when uh, when someone dies in the physical essence here, in the on on Ephesus, where we are right now, in the mm. physical. Mm. Uh, for them to, of course, for them to transcend, let me say about this person or someone who was growing in terms of consciousness, mm -hmm. like growing in knowledge and going like that. How, how finally did they come to reach to the to Laodicea? And uh, when someone reincarnates back, suppose this person was supposed to achieve certain things and then to, to accomplish in the physical essence, mm -hmm. how does it travel through all these phases and then comes back to as a physical? Maybe, maybe a baby or, or whatever. Very good question, Maralebo. Very, very impressive question. Let's for let's use for example the example of Master Yeshua. Master Yeshua was a man who lived in Ubuntu, who lived in love, purity, and justice. He vibrated in the seventh dimension. His life on earth, he manifested his spirituality on earth. It means he had nothing to pay back. So, if for example, Master Yeshua was in Ephesus when he came, when he died. We are told that uh, he resurrected, huh? but even the resurrection that we are taught is resurrection. It means he, he, his body was dead on the, on, on, on the grave and then he, he rose up with his physical body. No, huh? because when, Master, when, you, when you die in Ephesus, your physical body remains on the floor. You come out in your astral body, which is Smina, the sixth level. Now, you, climb, you come out in your astral body, which is Smina. If you are, Master Yeshua was a divine being, so he didn't need to go through the 72 judges. But for example, let's say for example, the label dies in, in Ephesus, the label comes out in his, in his uh, astral body. You go before the 72 judges. They show you your life on earth, how you lived. If you lived in the right way, you rise from Smina, they allow you to go to Pegamum, the mental world. It means you take out the astral body, you come out in your mental body in Pegamum. In Pegamum also, they allow you to pass through, to climb up to Taitira. You take out your mental body, you arrive in your, in your temple space body. Huh? Just imagine an onion, but a label, eh? you're removing the shell yeah. of an onion. Huh? You I get, get out, you get out of the temple space body, you arise in your first, in your third kingdom of light body, which is Sardis. You take it out, you come out in your body, which is the Philadelphia. You take out the body of Philadelphia, you come out in the last body, which is Laodicea. Now, 
to enter into the spiritual kingdom, the entities who are there, they have to check if you really have arrived at ascension to allow you to go through. Some ancestors are still in this three kingdom. They're not crossing yet. Because if you look at the Bible, it says that when he chased Adam and Eve out of the garden, he put a cherubim, some angels, to block them from coming back to the garden. It's symbolic language. It means that there are entities who prevent you from Laodicea to go back to the spiritual kingdom unless you have attained full consciousness. So you arrive at Laodicea, they check that, okay, but Lebo has arrived at the seventh dimension. He's activated his crown chakra. The Holy Spirit baptizes you with the Holy Spirit with fire. And then the entities who are there allow you to pass through to go to the spiritual kingdom. But currently, many ancestors are still in the, three, in the top three kingdoms. They have to incarnate back in the reign of a thousand years to be able to come and fulfill their their last crown chakra then to rise back to the spiritual kingdom now let's look at the man for example who is coming back to reincarnate there we give an example of a person who has nothing he's going straight like master Yeshua went straight he rose from the physical kingdom he crossed the spiritual kingdom he crossed the primordial spiritual kingdom he went back to the divine kingdom now let's take for example i for example if i am not living the right way i'm materialistic you know i have certain you know evil things that I'm doing in the earth. When I die in my astral body, I rise in my astral body. Now, depending on the life that I lived, I appear before the 72 judges. In Islam, they tell you that you meet 72 virgins. They even lie to you. You kill yourself here for nothing. You go there and meet the 72 judges. They say, ah, but Avi, you didn't live in the right way. Look at your life. Look what you did. Look what you did. No, no, no. You have to pay back. You rise. They allow you to rise in the mental world. You arrive in the mental world. You spend some time there, they begin to educate you of everything that you did, which was wrong. But you cannot go up to Titeria because your vibrational frequency cannot allow you to pass through Titeria because you are you vibrated, you vibrated in hate and materialistic. It means you have to come back and repair. So for mental world, you descend back to the astral world. Now, when you're descending back to the astral world, we shall speak about this in reincarnation in depth. I'm just trying to go through, but there's a lot of details. When you descend back to the astral world, they will create for you an astral body charged with your karmic energies that you produced on earth. So when you descend from the mental world, you're coming back to incarnate. You descend in the astral kingdom, astral world, they create for you an astral body which is charged with your karmas. So all the energies that you, that you had when you died on earth is put back into your astral body. Your mental body enters the astral body. And then you, from the astral body, you begin to wait for a couple on earth who are about to have a child. Hmm? But Alebo and his wife are over there in Germany. They're about to have a child. She's pregnant. And now the, the baby is evolving in the womb. And then by the fourth and fifth month, immediately, you who is in astral world, if that's, if that's what they're sending you to Brother Lebo's family, you begin to circulate the wife of Brother Lebo, looking for an opportunity to, to infiltrate. There's even a bad to Brother Lebo, because even the Luciferian beings, they also fight for an opportunity to infiltrate. So just as the sperm fights to get to the egg, mm -hmm. even the spirits fight to, to enter the pregnancy. So, Ralebo, if you are vibrating a certain frequency with your wife, which is not right, you may even, an infiltrator might infiltrate the pregnancy. So, that's very, it's very, very careful for the woman to be very careful when she's pregnant. So, the woman is, Ralebo's wife is pregnant on earth, the spirits, many spirits begin to circulate her, looking for an opportunity to incarnate. And then, finally, you who was in astral world, you go through you incarnate in the fourth and the fifth month, boom, the woman feels the baby has moved. You have incarnated. In some other cases, if an infiltrator incarnates and, the, and then the woman changes her vibration, she may have a miscarriage to send back the infiltrator. But in some other cases, the, you stay pregnant. And that is how you are basically incarnated into the woman's body. Now, when you incarnate in the fifth month, you enter into a process of anesthesia. Yeah? You know, but like in medicine, when they're operating on you, they put you some medicine so you can be anesthesia. So the spirit is in anesthesia in a, in, a, in, a, in a process of sleep up to the age of 14. So the woman gives birth to the child. The woman, you and your wife, you are raising an animal man. And then you begin to, the child begins to grow. The body is developing. You have a small child around the world. Yes, he's a human being, but the spirit is still asleep. 
they give that period of 14 years to allow the parents to train this animal mind with morals and virtues so that when the spirit wakes up at 14 to control the body, he can find a very good body which has certain good standing. So your child will enter in the fifth, in the fifth month as incarnated, ways to the age of 14. Because the spirit is old by the labor, the spirit is not new. No one comes mm -hmm. to the world as a new person, no. The body is new, but the spirit has had other experiences in other incarnations. He has incarnated back. Now he has to wait when the body has developed at the age of 14. Now at the age of 14, the body releases what we call the sexual energy. That is the green light for the spirit to control the body. Now your spirit begins to control the body. That's why you see many children at the age of 14, they change completely. You don't understand. Ah, my child has changed because now they are coming. Your spirit has woken up. And now the karmic returns, which was charged in his astral body, has begun to manifest in his life. He begins to have pleasures of the flesh. So the same thing that he needed to fix has begun to come back in his life. So he can conquer them and then begin to ascend slowly. But, but it's very important. People ask questions. Why don't we remember our past lives? People ask these questions. But, but Alebo, if you go to school and you fail an exam and they send you back to write that exam, if you already know the answers of the exam, you cheat. Yeah, you, definitely. What's the use of the exam if you already yes. know? Yes. That's why we come back and start again from zero. But at the age of 14, your karmic returns begin to open up, come back in your life, and you begin to ascend just like that. So that's basically by able what I can explain in short of what happens uh, when you die in that case. But we shall explain this in depth when we shall speak about reincarnation. We have three sessions in reincarnation to be able to explain to you how this um, actually happens. I think, uh, Ralebo, I think uh, I, I think answer your question. Yeah, I thank you very much, my king. You've, you've, you've really tackled it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. There's a lot of order in the universe. I can see Babila has his one hand up. Babila, if you can jump in, and then we can end our session for today. Babila has had. Can you hear me? Yes, Babila. Welcome. You have a hand. Oh, Zola, my brother. Um, ah, Zola. And Zola to all in the platform. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so grateful and thankful for this platform. And uh, I really wish there were more people on here. I wish it could grow like overnight because the community needs this. Our people worldwide need this awakening. Yes. As the times are quite, uh, you know, the times are quite jerry for for most people worldwide. We mm -hmm. really need to remember a lot of our foundation, and I think mm -hmm. you are doing an amazing job. Mm -hmm. I, for mm -hmm. one, yes. I, for one, kind of like Michael Jackson's uh, video, <laughs> remember the time. Mm -hmm. We need to really go back to remembering who we really are on a subatomic level. Yes. Um, Personally, I had a couple of experiences just to give like some credi credibility to the rest of the brothers and sisters on the platform. Mm. I had experience of traveling to one of the dimensions, a higher dimension, wow. which was uh, in the heart area. That's the, uh, I guess, dimension. And um, you're able to perceive the beings who work on the, the, the mentorship of Nebu Maloa, Ra. Mm. And these are the beings of the green order. Like mm. each level has each level has its own hue, its own vibration, its own aura, its own color. Mm. It's quite spectacular to see. And these beings are all green. Mm. And these are the people who are responsible for creating all your minerals, mm -hmm. like your stones and your your gems, the crystals, the mm -hmm. jade, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for making all of that. I like to tell that like our, our universe is so alive. The world we live in is so alive. When you perceive a stone, there's actually a world behind a stone. My God. The whole world. There's actually giants behind that stone. It's, it's mm -hmm. quite amazing what you are saying. The Simbis are all behind everything. Everything is alive. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes me remember when I was little and we didn't have this awareness because we grew up in a Christian setting. And the tree was a tree, and you know, spitting and you know, thinking it's just a tree, I could spit on it, I could break its branch, I could, you know, it's just a stone, you could crush it, you could kick it, throw it away. 
when you realize how much damage you're doing, my God. you know, it's, it's, it's actually time for us to come back home mm -hmm. while we still have time to fix what we have broken. And I'm so grateful that you have started something so big. I wish the rest of the world, all 7 billion, could all tune in to you and listen to this and wake up and mm -hmm. realize what's around them is alive. It's not dead. It's alive. Everything, the leaves, the flowers, the grass, everything is talking to you. But mm -hmm. you need to open up your cosmic divine ears, your cosmic yeah. divine eyes, your cosmic divine senses. You need to awaken and I'm so grateful. I can't wait to see the rest of what you come up with. But I just wanted to share have a Kabula with the family to make them know this is real. And if wow. you have somebody, share it. Let this grow like a cancer. If you know somebody, you have a family member, share this platform with them. It's so important. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Babila, for that input. I think because of time, we'll be coming to the end of our session for today. But I, I just want to insist on what, what, what Babila said. There's a, the symbols are behind everything. Huh? You, you, you get some seeds in your house and you go in your back garden. You begin to plant it in the ground. Uh, you, you basically just put the, the seed in the ground. You provide the water and the sunlight. Yes, but the symbi and minty, small genie creators begin to make sure that that seed begins to grow. First of all, it dies in darkness and then it begins to push out up to becoming a tree. They take years. Some trees take years to become very tall. It's the work of the symbis. There's an intelligence behind everything. And then you just wake up one day, you begin to cut down the trees in the forest like a fool. When the symbis have done so much work to make sure that the water bodies are perfect, you go and pollute the waters. You see? So lack of conscience Science without conscience, the destruction of the soul, how they say. So we have to be able to be responsible. Uh, you have to be responsible that uh, the world that we have, it's a gift from the Most High. We have to take care of it. And also, even our own body was created by the Simbi Abibulu. You're smoking cigarettes, you're drinking alcohol, you're doing certain things with your body, which is not right. You're destroying the, the works of this Abibulu. Sometimes you just sleep on the bed and you forget. You wake up in the morning. You don't know what happens. Who, who keeps your body running? Uh, that you wake up tomorrow in the morning. The sun is always there. The sun has never deceived you. It always rises and always sets. There's an intelligence behind the great symbols that make sure that the sun is there, the moon is there, the clouds are there, oxygen is there for you to breathe. So when you begin to understand these things, you begin to become even more responsible. So I want to thank you guys all for being here. For joining us in this session of uh, Zolabantu class, I want to appreciate Brother Abraham has joined us as well, and I really appreciate you for coming. I hope next time you can be able to join us in in, in the beginning. That will be really really amazing. I just want to uh, uh, play our final video to be able to let you know about what we do, so you can be able to know how you can reach us at Zolabantu. It's really really important, and I'm just gonna play this video, and then we'll end for today. I'd like to appreciate Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Zolabantu community. We at Zolabantu, we live in love, we live in purity, we live in justice. We are priests, we are scientists, we are judges. The three pillars of spirituality we bring together the best of us. We build together, we don't destroy. Support us by liking the video. Vibrate in love by sharing the video to one person that you love. Become our member here on YouTube by clicking join. Follow us on Instagram. We have basically many courses over there. Follow us also on Facebook. We have many posts over there become our patreon to show us love by supporting us we have amazing courses available on our patreon account visit our website to know more about zolabantu click on our playlist here on youtube to be able to watch our courses for free and see our classes join the zolabantu class every sunday available here on youtube to decolonize your mind apply for the swahili language class starting basically in july it's free Donate to us via PayPal. If you cannot donate fans, donate to us your time by blessing us with your skills and expertise on our projects. Bless us with at least one hour a week of your time. Our key projects are education, food, media, army, and the restoration of the African woman. We love you so much, Robin. Kisses. Mwah. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful week ahead. Vibrate in love, purity, and justice, and be the best version of yourself. And you know, until we see you in our next class coming up on next sunday brother babila please leave us your phone number in the chat or your email so we can be able to be in touch with you we love you brother abraham Pinamani, 
Brother Frederick, and also Brother Label for joining us today. And also Mr. Ndai, who's always here with us. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful week. The class is available on our YouTube page. You can listen to it again. Try to be able to watch the other classes as well to be able to know what's coming up. Next week is the construction of the physical kingdom. We'll be able to explain in depth how was it constructed. And after that, we shall look at basically um, the nine bodies of the spirit. Huh? You have nine bodies in you. So that'll be a really interesting session. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a beautiful uh, week ahead. And uh, we hope that you'll be able to make the world a better place. Thank you. Bye for now. Our Majesty Ra, named Bumbaloa. He was chosen among the seven to carry out a great duty, a work of wonder and success. He did. He did it well. All he ever asked was to be respected and recompensed for the work he did. Was he recompensed? No! Was he recompensed? No! Seven cosmic communities, all given to sheeps. Sheeps, and good-for-nothing humans. Humans that we formed and shaped with our hands. Humans that we taught how to live and survive in the environment. Humans that we taught how to master the animal body. All because they are sons of the Force upstairs. The Force must fall. We rule Babylon and most of the Earth. We were locked up and out of control, but now we have control. The sheeps messed up and created an opportunity for us. And now their home is closer to us than ever. Infiltrate them, generals. Be alert. We have to win. Deputy, how many of ours have infiltrated their realm? All hail Mfumu Solomon. We currently stand at two billion successful infiltrations. Up to three billion souls come directly from Babylon. Many of our agents run that place. Very good, but it is not enough. I want infiltrations in all areas and space. Take advantage of their free will. It was given to them as a power, but they have no understanding of it or how to use it. We will use it to our advantage. My people, we only have 400 years left to take full control of the harvest. The Ten Virgins will miss the wedding. A piece of the Force plans to visit to reinforce them and lock us out. We will be ready just like the last time, when we killed the sun.
nations chrétiennes Nous sommes frères en Jésus-Christ Liés par la parole de Dieu Aimer l'Afrique, c'est notre soeur Le créateur de cieux et la terre N'a-t-il pas dit après 50 ans Laisser l'esclave et s'en aller Et attendre Contre moi, 